welcome to another Mendix Second Club show with me, Darren. And me, Abby. So, welcome back. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing Would I Lie to You? Yes, you lie to me all the time. <laughs> Would I? Yes. <laughs> I never lie. Saint I am. But this week, in the news, Jesus managed to turn himself into a woman and steal Dell's King of the Mountain up Sawpit Lane. What the hell? Jesus. And also in the news, Joe DeGregorio went mountain biking and fell off and cut his knee. That one's nasty. That's some really dirty legs, Joe. So I've got some facts about cycling cheating this week that may be true, they may all be true, I may have made them all up, they may just be fake news. Abby has to decipher which is true and which is a lie. Um. <laughs> right, so are you ready? No. Bye. <laughs> You're back. Don't leave me alone. The first one. Juju Pepe was an Italian cyclist Great in 1982 name. in the Tour de France. He got into a solo breakaway, climbing the Col de Bisque, and he took a toilet break after he reached the summit. He had a heart attack due to the amount of drugs that were in his system and slumped over his handlebars, but travelled two kilometres down the hill. Nobody knew he was dead. Dead? He crashed into the trees on the first bend and doctors confirmed he had been dead for quite a few minutes before he crashed. He also had his old man out. <laughs> oh no. Is that true or is that false? First of all, he had a great name. Juju Pepe. Yeah, that's a very fun name to say. There was so much happening in that story. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that one's true. You think that one's true? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot. What do you think? That one is a lie. Oh, okay. That one is actually a storyline in Tour de Pharmacy written by Andy Samberg. Okay. And Juju Pepe is played by Orlando Bloom. Oh, that one. That well, one. that would explain why. I thought it was real because I didn't <laughs> think you'd be able to come up with it. And I was right. You didn't come up with it. I didn't come up with that one. No. <laughs> but that was a lie. Right, the next one. Hippolyte Arcoutrier. Was Wait, was Jojo Pepe, is that a real name though? Or is that made up That's the too? character's name, man. Oh, okay, the character. I, I don't think it's real. Okay. Right, Hippolyte Arcoutrier was the favourite to win the 1903 Tour de France. He had to withdraw midway through the race after someone spiked his lemonade and he suffered severe food poisoning. True or a lie? Well, who'd be drinking lemonade on a tour? Because fizzy drinks, like, they dehydrate you. It was 1903. <laughs> um, Did they have lemonade in 1903? I don't know. Did they? I don't think... <laughs> I don't think they did. So I'll go with that as a lie then, just based on lemonade. That one oh. is true. Oh. <laughs> in the 1903 Tour de France, he was the favourite and he did suffer Wait, serious... Wait, you can have lemonade poison. without being carbonated, can't you? Yeah. So just to confuse you, in the following year, in 1904, in the Tour de France again, Maurice Garin, who was the people's champion, he won the race, much to the delight of all the fans, but in its ensuing investigation, he was found to have been cheating and was disqualified. It was revealed that after four months, the improprieties were uncovered and the riders had taken a train for part of the stage. They put itching powder in competitors' shorts with a group of his supporters also attacking fellow riders with sticks, as well as showering the road with broken glass to give their competitors punctures. True or a lie? Well, I think I've heard of like the whole train and the itching powder thing. I think that's true. But when I did the winners, the names of the winners a few weeks ago, I don't remember seeing that name. What was the name? Maurice Garin. No. I don't remember seeing Maurice that name. Garin. I think this is one you twisted for me again, but I'm going to say true. <laughs> it is true. Yay. You wouldn't have seen his name because he was disqualified, and I think there was another winner. Henry Coupe, Bobé, somebody like that. Somebody French. Yeah, they had a list of all the like disqualified ones, like yes. Lance Armstrong as well. So that one is indeed true. No. So the next one. <laughs> Gene Robich was a small man. He was only five foot three. Nothing wrong with being small. No, there's nothing wrong nothing with being wrong small. small. Five three. He also weighed 130 pounds, which caused his fans to give him the nickname Kid Goat. Is that a lot? 130 pounds. I'm not good with pounds. I don't know, I only do kilograms. Yeah. 14 pounds is 
a stone in it. So that's nine stone ish. Later, his nickname was changed to Leatherhead because he was forced to wear a leather helmet, unheard of at the time, in order to protect a steel plate inserted in his skull following a bad crash. Anyway, Robert was the first man to win the Tour de France following World War II. He reached the summit of a mountain and his crew had handed him a water bottle as he needed hydration following a difficult climb, but in reality there was no water in the bottle. It was typically it was filled with mercury or lead, designed to increase Robert's weight on the ensuing downhill section, at which time he would jettison his bottles to continue the race with his competitors. True or alive. Oh, that's where it ends. D did he die? Because surely if he's chugging mercury and lead he's dead he wasn't drinking it he was just using it as weight oh, to okay. make him way more to go down the hill faster okay because he could go uphill faster because he was lighter right i'm gonna go with true on that one again that is true yes. these are ridiculous <laughs> aren't they <Come> on, <laughs> i just gate now <laughs> is dad smart enough to come up with that no <laughs> no clearly not right so the next one Pat Boyd, an English cyclist. Okay. He was one of the toughest cyclists in the 1950s, but his bike wasn't quite resilient. And during a road race in Belgium, the Englishman battled by a rough cobblestone street, caused his bike to puncture a tyre and force him to repair. This left Boyd at the back of the pack and seemingly out of the race. So Pat got back on his bike and found, just by chance, a local who happened to know uh, a sh secret shortcut. So the pair sneaked down the shortcut through a passageway and emerged at the other end of the alley where they could see the peloton within reach. So Pat was back in business. He smashed and smashed and smashed, got back on the peloton and won the race. Cool ending, isn't it? That, sounds, that sounds like something that happened on the amazing race. <laughs> I think that's false. <laughs> well, it is actually true. But? But the race he actually won he wasn't entered in, it was just another race <laughs> <laughs> that happened to be going on at the same time. <laughs> the race he was in, he didn't finish. It was later found out he hadn't even entered that race and was disqualified. <laughs> right, so the next one. Jean Ducamp was actually called Jenny. She competed in the 1906 Tour de France, disguised herself as a man and entered the race to prove that a woman could compete in the race. And after eight days of racing, when the fellow rider uh, was sharing with a roommate, Giuseppe Bardellini, he walked in on her in the shower. She was disqualified, although the two later got married and have six children. Aww. Their middle son, Marco Bardellini, competed in the 1935 Tour de France and he finished fourth. Is that true or is that a lie? What year? 1935, he won the Tour de France. It was 1906 originally. All the suffragettes. I'm going to say true. That one I made up. Oh. That is a lie. <laughs> you said I can't think of something ingenious. Well, it wasn't that complicated. <laughs> uh, thinking back on it, it seems right that there would be some nudity involved in one of your stories. What? <laughs> really? Anyway, right, so fast forward in the year, Arcoutre is back in the Tour de France after being robbed of his chance to win due to a bottle of bad lemonade. Oh, is this guy again? It's this guy again, yeah. Right, a couture was spotted on the stage being towed from a car with string attached to a cork which he was gripping between his teeth. For miles he was dragged behind a car with a cork in his mouth just to win. He would have gotten away with it too if he hadn't turned up just minutes after the commissaires who had crossed the finish line and had also driven the stage. True. Or is that a lie? What's a com commissaires? Commissaires are the judges in cycling. Right. A cork in the mouth. By a string. <laughs> um, I think that's fake. You think that's a lie? Yeah. Well, the bad lemonade was true. This is also true. <laughs> the things they got up to in the early 1900s. No wonder Keith writes an electric bike, isn't it? Right, so the next one. I'm not doing great, am I? I've only got one. Oh, you know, we'll tally him up again. <laughs> One or two. In 1997, German rider Jan Ulrich was found to be cheating on one stage. He was trailing Miguel Indurain into the mountains and suddenly had a mysterious problem with his bike and was allowed to hold onto his team car whilst a repair was made. This pulled him up the mountain, holding onto the car for one and a half kilometres. Enough time for him to recharge his batteries. He then was able to close the gap, attack 
on the stage and he was asked afterwards about the mechanical, to which he said he had a problem with the seat. But separately interviewed, his mechanic was asked and it was a problem with the derailleur. Uh-oh, someone didn't sort the stories out. Yes, Jan Ulrich was disqualified from the stage and finished last on the stage, putting him out of contention for the Tour de France that year. Is that true or is that a lie? I think. I mean, if I keep saying true, they're bound to be true at some point, right? <laughs> um, I don't like not being the one asking the questions. Do you want to see a picture of Jan Ulrich? Um, let's go true. That is also a lie that I made up. Jan Ulrich did actually compete with Miguel Indurain in the Tour de France, but he didn't cheat. Well, he took drugs, but he didn't cheat that way. Look at that, I think you got one correct. The rest you got wrong. Did you do better? Oh, well, I mean, it's not hard, is it? <laughs> but also, I only need six more lights to get around the lap. <laughs> you ain't getting them six lights. Six lights. Six lights. So, moving on to Door to Joke of the Week. I feel like I should have some, like, big title or something. Or your own theme tune. Yeah. Door to Joke of the Week. <laughs> Why do ducks have feathers? They're down with it? No, to hide their butt quacks. <laughs> <laughs> really? And comment of this week comes from Jonathan Bingham via Facebook, which was... He says, Hi Darren, just wanted to say your recent videos have been great. A real inspiration for us all at a unique and strange time. Your climbing knowledge has certainly got me going. I'll certainly be fitter by the time we're out of lockdown. I really should become a member as I'm stealing your climbing and route knowledge. Brilliant. Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on a club ride in the not too distant future. So what's coming up next week then, Abby? You'll have to tune in next week and find out. No, come on. Spoilers. Okay, so I have... Obviously the Tour de France is postponed, but in spirits of that, I have taken all of the kits and jerseys and we're going to be ranking them from best to worst with the team kits because I think that that's a good amalgamation of my costume knowledge and your cycling knowledge. Is the Mendic cycling jersey in there? I, well, are you taking part in the Tour de France? Well, you could if we were allowed. Mm, spoiler, it's not. <laughs> it's the best jersey. Mm, well. <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, oh, comment, subscribe, and ding that notification bell. <laughs> we will see you again next week. Thank you.